Recently, I posted a video about the deleted scenes and the things cut from the original adaptation of Harry Potter. And since it's almost been 20 years since the release of Philosopher's Stone in theaters, there seems to be a ton of people pleading for another adaptation, a TV series to be exact. This would allow for the characters in the full story to be shown on screen, without the restriction of time. Some may say, the way that JK herself envisioned. So if we are creating a brand new TV series for the seven books of Harry Potter, it just makes sense that we need to update the cast. It's not like Daniel Radcliffe and the Golden Trio can go back in time and become Eleven again. Not to mention that sadly, some of the original cast members are no longer with us. So that being said, let's recast Harry Potter for today. First off, I know Harry Potter is British, and the original adaptation kept to the tradition that pretty much only cast British actors. I'm gonna try to stay within those parameters, but some casting decisions are just too good to pass up, even though they might be American or otherwise. Also, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of characters in Harry Potter. So for now, let's tackle Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and the main characters in that. And then if you do enjoy this, please comment below and we'll slowly tackle the series film by film, or should I say season by season. So first off, the trio, those wonderful people who carried the entire series. Now first casting decision, and honestly, I'm gonna do a cop out instantly because I believe the trio should be all unknown actors. I love the way that we never saw Daniel or Rupert or Emma's faces before they landed in Harry Potter. And honestly, I feel the same way about all the students in the film. It allowed us as audience members to really attach the character to that person and allowed them to really make it their own. So for this series, line up those 10 to 12 year old actors and actresses because we need to find nobodies for this role. I think it's just important to the series. I apologize it's a cop out right off the bat, but if I was that casting director sitting in that seat, exactly what I would do. So before you say that I missed a bunch of characters, I won't be casting any of the Hogwarts students. They should all be unknown actors. But beyond the trio, there are very important characters and adult characters that we can cast. One of monumental importance is that of Albus Dumbledore. We previously saw two actors portray him. And although I love them for different reasons, but I feel like it's important that his calm and his warmth is one that can be felt through the screen. That's why I've decided the perfect person to play Dumbledore would be Michael Caine. He has one of the longest and most interesting careers in Hollywood. He has gravitas, but he can also play calm and gentle. And that nature is really important for Dumbledore. Endure, Master Wayne. Take it. They'll hate you for it, but that's the point of Batman. He can be the outcast. He can make the choice that no one else can make. We see it slightly when he plays Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy, but I think he can take it a step further and really make the character his own. His face and the way he presents himself he can make himself feel really welcoming or kind, but also can deliver those really badass moments. So Michael Caine as Dumbledore. McGonagall is up next, a fierce and powerful woman who demands attention, dominating yet loving. For her, I have a controversial choice, an actress who's actually appeared before in the Harry Potter films, Emma Thompson. Now she donned the iconic role of Trelawney for the films, but I feel like she'd be absolutely perfect for McGonagall now. She has aged perfectly into the role, and for those who haven't seen her other acting roles, she's a chameleon. Her poise and presence is unrivaled on screen. Like, check this out. I got the impression last time we spoke that you didn't see the point of school, or of me, or of any of us here. I know I was stupid. I know now that I need to go to university. It gives me absolutely no pleasure whatsoever to see our young schoolgirls throwing their lives away. Although, of course, you are not one of our schoolgirls anymore, through your own volition. I suppose you think I'm a ruined woman. <laughs> You're not a woman. No, I'm afraid I think that the offer of a place at this school would be wasted on you. That's McGonagall if I've ever seen her. So Emma Thompson for McGonagall. If we're going in order of professors, it would only be right if we tackled Snape next, the bravest man that Harry's ever known. He plays the good, the bad, and everything else in between. Although he is rarely at the forefront in the plot, his interesting face and his timid nature alludes to inner workings in his mind, and how he's always up to something. For Snape, it's hard to look beyond the perfect choice, even though he is American. The face, the hair, his acting skill. Adam Driver would be the only choice in my eyes. And I'll never stop loving him, even though it doesn't make sense anymore. 
Yes, he is on the younger side, but he's by far the best part of the sequel trilogy. Did he tell you what happened that night? Yes. No. And I think he would knock it out of the park. He's an amazing actor, and he's wowed me in every single movie he's in. And I'm sure he'd be someone to take interesting choices and not do an impersonation of just Alan Rickman. So Adam Driver as Severus Snape. Sticking with the professors, we should tackle the villain of Philosopher's Stone. No, not Voldemort, because at this point in time, he's really just someone's hairdo. Or Quirrell, the man who is willing to accept he who must not be named on the back of his head. The man who essentially acts the entire movie with his stutter and the perception of weakness. I think Andrew Scott would bring a different layer to this performance than we saw in the original. If you've seen his work on Sherlock and Fleabag, he can really embody any role. Mm, no, don't be obvious. I mean, I'm gonna kill you anyway someday. I don't want to rush it though. I'm saving it up for something special. No, 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 no. And most importantly, I think he takes on the physicality as well. I think Quirrell's movement and body language done by Scott would really show the intricacies of his performance. And I think he'd do an amazing job. And if anything, it'd be really interesting. So, Andrew Scott for Professor Quirrell. All right, so moving on from Professor to staff, Hagrid's up next. The half giant, the gentle giant, funny, and always has his heart on his sleeve. This one's difficult. Although Harry Potter always had an amazing cast, I felt like Hagrid was right on the nose and perfect. I really struggled with this one. But I thought maybe we can go a different way, almost lean into that comedic relief a little bit more. That's why I went with Nick Frost. I think he would exemplify that gentle side very well, all while bringing some much needed lighthearted moments to the first entries of the series. Gary thinks we should keep up with the crawl because they know what we're doing, but they don't know that we know what they're doing. And basically no one else has a better idea. So f it. So Nick Frost is Hagrid. Now for moving on, we should really tackle Harry's home, the Dursleys, Vernon, Petunia, and Dudley. As I mentioned previously, any child roles I won't be casting. So, sorry Dudley, you're going to be unknown as well. But Vernon and Petunia, they set the tone for the story. They have a no-nonsense tone to them. Mark Addy from Game of Thrones and A Knight's Tale, I feel would be perfect for Vernon. And I feel like Olivia Colman would bring a lot more dimension to Petunia. Although the characters in the original series are interpreted well, these characters have a lot more depth that could really be explored. And I feel like Mark Addy and Coleman could really expand them and flesh out these characters and see a lot more depth in them. So Mark Addy and Olivia Coleman as Petunia and Vernon Dursley. Now there are minor roles that do come back in the series, but they play importance in Philosopher's Stone, such as Ollivander. Someone who I think would be amazing for Ollivander would be Bill Nighy. He's got this otherworldly nature to him, and although we barely see him, I think he'd be a scene stealer. So Bill Nighy as Ollivander. And then there's roles like the ghosts at Hogwarts and Filch, who show up every once in a while in the films, but really don't play any crucial role. Still, they are important. I mean, there is the death day party, and Peeves is always up to something. So for Filch, I think Reeves and fans could really explore the Squib storyline and play the character differently than we've seen. So Reeves and fans as Filch. As for nearly headless Nick, I think it would be hard to take away the role from John Cleese. But honestly, I think Rowan Atkinson would nail this small role. He'd play it with a ridiculousness and a fun-loving nature that I feel like would again steal scenes. And Rowan Atkinson as nearly headless Nick. And for Peeves the Poltergeist, a role that fans have always wanted to see on screen, I think it'd be really interesting to see Simon Pegg have some fun with the character. He'd really jump off the screen. So Simon Pegg as Peeves the Poltergeist. So there is the cast of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Either than some unknown actors that we haven't seen before, I think this is a really interesting cast. And I understand there are many characters we briefly see on screen, but play a much bigger role in the series. I'm not casting them today. They're gonna come back, like Molly Weasley or even Lily Potter. I'm gonna wait to cast them in the film that makes sense. For example, Molly is much more prevalent in the Chamber of Secrets. So what do you think of the cast? And are you interested in a Harry Potter TV series that could really dive more into the story than the movies could? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you enjoyed this and we'll tackle Chamber of Secrets. As always, thank you to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Edwards, Gabe Marchand, Gunnar Leglin, Colleen West, Marco Perry, Roland, Aiden McShane, Shalon Hudson, Kieran Hunt, Joris Conan, Brandon Warner, Sweevy, Alex Tal, Derek B. Bell, 
Jacob Wolf, and newcomers Jerome Froelich and Alexander Gardulo. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.